my favorite, favorite thing from this whole festival so far was the Irish milkshake. Thank you. And that just blew my mind. That was the last thing I got on my way out the door on my second day. I was Man. just like, I am not leaving here without having that milkshake. And, and you're right. It's the perfect dessert. And it's, you know, even at three o'clock in the afternoon, it's a great nightcap. Uh- <laughs> I'm kicking myself that I didn't have this milkshake. I think I need to go back. <laughs> I'm Julia Colon, and this is The Zest. Citrus, seafood, Spanish flavor, and southern charm. The Zest celebrates cuisine and community in the Sunshine State. Today, everything you want to know about eating and drinking your way around the world. It's the most delicious time of year at the most magical place on Earth. I'm talking about the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival. The annual event takes place through November 23rd at Epcot's World Showcase. Now, that's the area of the theme park whose architecture replicates a bunch of different countries. One minute, you're taking a selfie in front of a replica Eiffel Tower, and next thing you know, you're climbing the steps of an Aztec temple in fake Mexico. Throughout the year, each quote-unquote country in Epcot highlights its cuisine. But during the Food and Wine Festival, things get even more elaborate with special kiosks featuring bespoke food and drinks, plus other special events. I recently attended the festival, as did two of my WUSF colleagues. In this bonus Zest episode, we'll share our experience and offer tips for eating and drinking your way around the world. Hello, my name is Leslie Laney, and I am the Director of Digital Services here at WUSF, so I get to oversee all the website and social media and and podcasts that we have to offer. I am a seasoned pass holder, so I am one of those uh, Floridians that that get to enjoy uh, the magic of Disney World at pretty much any time I would like to go, right? Um, And so I have enjoyed food and wine for probably a decade or, or more in, in multiple times. So I enjoy having a pass so that I don't have to try to shove every single one of the things that I want to eat in one <laughs> visit, right? Uh, I, can, I can plan my attack on multiple visits. So uh, we have a crew of people. Um, a lot of them are Orlando-based folks. And we just plan times to meet up and and divide and conquer and, and do a lot of sharing so that we can try to sample as many tasty treats as possible. Very cool. And I know you're going to have a lot of great tips, but first, the man behind the laugh. Sorry about that. (laughs) No, please. (laughs) We heard that here. Yeah. I'm Mark Schreiner. I'm the assistant news director and intern coordinator for the WUSF newsroom. I have probably been going on and off to uh, Food and Wine Fest since either 2007 or 2009. So probably 10 times in that 15-year period. Um, I am not a pass holder, uh, but I do, you know, particularly when it comes time for the festival, uh, I have friends that come in from out of town a lot of times, and it's always like, oh, we'll be down there in the month of September. I'm, I'm over. I'm, I'm there. October. <laughs> I'm there. If, if wine and food, I'm, I'm coming over there, guys. Uh, but this most recent time, a uh, friend of mine from high school, his daughter was getting married, got married at Disney, which was an experience in and of itself. Um, but I did have a couple of day passes, so... I went on a Monday and enjoyed Epcot and the Food and Wine Fest. And then uh, the next day, we were going to do the Magic Kingdom Halloween party. And I had a day pass again for the afternoon. And I literally found myself standing at the transportation center looking at the two monorails going, Magic Kingdom for 11 hours or Epcot before Magic Kingdom. And I went for a second day at Epcot. Yeah, oh, my that's gosh. That's a no-brainer. Yeah, that's yeah. the best. Oh, wow. Okay. And I'm Delia Colon, executive producer and host of The Zest. And I should mention that my trip was part of a media group, so it was comped. But opinions, I'm here to tell you the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and I went for the very first time with my wow. husband. I know. Husband, um, 12-year-old daughter, and 8-year-old son. So I don't even know where to start. It's <laughs> yeah. literally like this lagoon, and then every few feet, you're in a different country. But I want to know from each of you if you had to create a fantasy meal, like something you ate from each country that was just your top, what would that be? Oh, you know Leslie, I'm going to start with the Brazilian cheese bread. Oh, that's a classic. That's, I mean, it's a, it, 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 you can't screw up cheese bread, and they do they did just an absolute wonderful job with that. Um, then I also liked the truffle mac and cheese. 
Yes. Macetizers was good. And we'll get into the uh, the wines later on because that's one of the things that I always go for is the wines. But literally, I had the best wine I've ever had at Epcot uh, on this most recent trip. Ooh, that's a good teaser. Yeah. Canada also never disappoints. No. Um, they have a filet mignon with mushrooms and boars and garlic and fire herbs, mashed potatoes. It's impeccable. I got to tell you, in terms of like, you know, Dali, you mentioned like a dream moment, but just like, like just this quintessential Disney moment was I'm standing there in the afternoon and I've got the cheddar cheese and bacon soup from Canada. Uh, you got a nice big bread um, baguette with it and um, a glass of Cabernet. And then on the loudspeakers, they're playing an instrumental version of the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald. Ooh. And I'm just like, you can't, you know, short of like maple leaves and, 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 and ice skates, there's nothing more Canadian than what's going on in this very moment <laughs> in the middle of 85 degree, you know, Florida weather. <laughs> that is so that is so Disney. And you did mention, Leslie, um, Canada, the cheddar cheese and bacon soup with the pretzel roll mm-hmm. is always a hit. And yeah. Chef Youngman, who's the uh, chef who oversees the food at Epcot, told me that's something that they will probably never take off the menu. Yeah, because it is so popular. I'm trying to think of my favorites. There were so many. All right. I loved India. I thought the samosas, it was a potato and pea samosa with coriander lime cream. Mm. That line was long and it was worth it. I mean, the food was just perfect. Those samosas were crispy on the outside, pillowy on the inside. They had a little bit of a kick to them, but not too, too spicy. I really enjoyed that. The pan de elote, which is like a Mexican cornbread with chocolate sauce and queso fresco, also really, really good. And then Spain, red sangria. Sangria is one of my favorites. So that would Mm -hmm. be kind of my dream meal, my house of carbs, I guess. But yeah, we need to talk about... Anything else that you really enjoyed? I do want to throw something from some friends of mine, the, the, the folks who I was hanging out with. They were raving about, and it's not something that, that is necessarily a favorite of mine, but the swine brine, um, which I'm trying to remember which, which tent the swine brine was at, um, but it had the Jim Beam bourbon, apple cinnamon cider, lemon juice, and Dijon mustard with a short rib. Oh, flavors from fire. That was one of the one of the newer kind of um, uh, kiosks that they had. Um, that that was the other thing from and and Leslie, I'm sure you can attest to it as well. From attending previous years, it's not just the countries; it's that they have these other little side kiosks um, where you know you can get these unexpected things. I think three years ago, we ended up having a conversation with the chef from Flavors from Fire because he was from Chicago like myself and my friends are. And we literally, he he actually left the kitchen to come out and talk with us for like 10 minutes. It was the nicest thing. Um, But those little side kiosks where you're like, oh, this is maybe a little American barbecue or, you know, no real theme to it. Those are the ones you want to check out as well. Yeah, Yeah. that's a good point. It's not just the countries. I mean, we all brought our festival passports, which are these little booklets that have a guide to the festival. And there's so much here before you even get to the countries, the main attraction. Yeah. Yeah. So you really do have to pace yourself. That's why that's where I got in trouble this last last trip, because there was the last few years Epcot's been under construction, that whole front area. Uh, where the the famous dome is, it, yeah. it's it's all been under uh, renovation, and I found that this year some of my favorite things actually came from that whole new area, that um, Communicore Hall. Yeah, like my favorite favorite thing from this whole festival so far was the Irish milkshake. Thank you. And that just blew my mind. And it has Guinness Stout, Bailey's Original Irish Cream, and vanilla ice cream, and it was like the perfect chocolatey shake goodness with these little chocolatey crumbles on top. That was the last thing I got on my way out the door on my second day. I was Man. just like, I am not leaving here without having that milkshake. And and you're right. It's the perfect dessert. And it's, you know, even at three o'clock in the afternoon, it's a great nightcap. Uh, <laughs> I'm kicking myself that I didn't have this milkshake. I think I need to go back. <laughs> and that's, I mean, and Dalia, you know, and Leslie knows as well, the idea that there are so many things that if you suddenly are looking at the booklet a week later, you're going, how did I miss this? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I seriously recommend getting that booklet, taking a look online at different, um, you know, different websites as well in advance so you can kind of plan things out. And what I did also like about the the booklet this year was this little map that they kind of stuck in the middle. And it's not even a map about, you know, where to go. It's more of a map of flavors. Yeah. And it kind of maps out, you know, you want sweet, you want savory, go this way, go that way. That's so smart. 
And there's also a lot of cheese. I mean, Mark, you mentioned a few cheese items oh. already, but they have sort of a, a fun thing this year called Emile's Fromage Montage, Emile from the movie Ratatouille. And there are all different cheese dishes that's sort of a running theme throughout the festival, which is really cool because you can kind of go through and try to, you know, check them all off. Um, There's but 10 of them. It's not healthy to check them it's all so off. It's <laughs> cheese. There's really a lot of cheese. Maybe you split up or like Leslie, you do one one weekend and yeah. then you come back another weekend. But um, I think it's also great if you're going with kids like I did because there are a lot of new flavors here. But Everybody is familiar with cheese. So you can say, hey, kids, let's try a different cheese. Let's try a cheese from a different country, which I think is really cool. Leslie, anything else you liked? Your book is is like uh, marked up. You've got highlights. You've got uh, post-its. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I definitely enjoyed I love spicy things. And so at the Brew Wing Lab at the Odyssey, another place that's at the front. So, again, like I yeah. said, I, I got caught at the front and, and, and kind of filled up quick. But they have impossible, uh, or I'm sorry, unnecessarily spicy yet extremely tasty Carolina Reaper pepper curry oh. wings. And let me tell you, they were hot. I, I can handle a lot of heat. I could only get two of these down, <laughs> but it was, a, it was a good flavor. And to accompany that, uh, they, they also sell fried pickle spears. So if you like a good fried pickle, these were these were excellent. I will say that one of the things that I saw, and I'm sure Dalia again with children, it's something that's worth knowing. In a lot of cases, some of the food portions, honestly, are too much. Yep. Particularly for one person, but it's great to split with a child. Um, like the griddle cheese with pistachio and honey from from Greece. I mean, it's basically just a huge slice of cheese that's that's been griddled, and it's it's delicious. But it's like. Oh my gosh! How much cheese is there? Right, I agree. These aren't just like tiny bites. Mm-hmm. You no. could you could go to two kiosks and be full. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and that's it, it's you, you got to make a day of it. You got to at least plan your time out so that you're not rushing from place to place and filling up quick. Um, and and let me just really quick talking about the wine because I actually call it wine and food fest because <laughs> I am a wine guy. Uh, I, I I actually used to co-host a, a radio show about wine here in the Tampa area. Um, so I love going there and, and trying the different wines. And the one that I absolutely loved was one that was called Goji. And I'd never heard of it before. And I looked it up and it was a Pinot Noir at, um, I got to see which which place it was at, but uh, it was at Bramblewood Bites. And Goji, it's a Pinot Noir out of uh, Santa Rita Hills, California. And the owner is the actor Kurt Russell. What? Who has, of course, ties as Disney from the Guardians of the Galaxy movies, as well as he used to be, when he was a little kid, he was a, a Disney actor. And I tried this Pinot um, my first day, and it was so good. Now, it's $16 for a two, a two and a half ounce pour, so it's a little expensive. But I looked it up, found out the information about it, came back the next day, and went to the young man behind the counter and said, could I just look at the bottle? And it turns out that it's a 2014 Pinot Noir, so it's very nicely aged. Um, It's also the only vintage of this specific Pinot Noir called Birdie that Goji made. Retails for $107 a bottle. Wow. But it's literally the best wine that I've ever had at any of these Epcot Wine and Food Fests. And it's the other thing that I liked wine-wise was there was a lot of sparkling and rosés. And a Florida... August, September afternoon, the the sparkling and the rosés are just hitting right. And the one that I was very nicely surprised by was India. Had a Sula Vineyards Brut Tropical. And I've never had an Indian wine, let alone an Indian sparkling wine, and it was just delicious. So you go in with your eyes open and willing to try different things, you'll have a blast. That sounds incredible. And Disney's wine program in general, I think, is underrated. We had oh, um, yeah. journalists and wine connoisseur Judith Smelser on, a fellow public media journalist. She's got um, the Orlando Wine Blog, and she loves the wine program at Disney. She's always yeah. raving about it. I mean, in addition, Epcot's Brewing Lab at the Odyssey, they have a ton of local beers on tap from Copper Tail in Tampa, Cigar City in Tampa, Keel Farms in Plant City, Three Daughters in St. Pete. So Disney really is, you know, 
it's international, but it's also still local. Yeah, and that's that's what I like as well. I mean, I, I love a beer, and um, a, a lot of these ales and IPAs that they have are a lot of uh, more of the fruitier variety. Again, because they know that you're walking around in the heat, and these are the refreshing beers. Um, but I like that there are, you know, like you say, the local and state breweries, and there's stuff that, in some cases, you can't even find it in the brewery. They're just making it special yeah. for Disney. Yeah, very cool. Back to food. Is there anything you ate or drank? We can keep it, you know, food and wine. Is there anything you ate that reminded you of something you've encountered in Tampa Bay? Oh, wow. I try not to choose a lot of things that I would regularly have. Like, I, I try to use food and wine as a, a, a place to explore yeah. things that I might not get on a regular basis just because it is a small portion and it's a small amount of money. So, you're not, you know, wasting too much if you don't like it. That's a great point. And I do love the fact that you're only paying for what you eat. It's not like a buffet situation where it's $100 a person. Yeah. I mean, this is included in your park ticket. I do want to point out that the food is, I mean, you did the media tour. The food is extra cost at these individual booths. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I, I will say something that reminded me nicely of Tampa was in Mexico, the barbacoa tortillas. Um, you know, there's there's nothing wrong with a good barbacoa at any point in time. And then, and it reminded me a lot of like Taco Bus and similar um, food trucks that I've seen here in the Tampa Bay area. But that was that was a nice treat as well. Yeah. When I got to um, China and Japan, that area, they didn't have a Thailand kiosk or a Thailand country represented. But that area reminded me of Wat Temple. If you've ever been there, it's yeah. on the east side of Tampa, like Brandon area, my neck of the woods, which is a very cool Sunday market mm -hmm. with there are literally monks walking around. Oh, wow. And there's a temple you can take your shoes off and go inside and then get your food from the different food stalls and grab a picnic table and sit there on the Palm River. You yeah. can bring your dog. So if you're looking to sort of replicate that feeling, you can do that in different spots in Tampa Bay. In, I think, Pinellas Park, there's occasionally like a Vietnamese food festival that happens mm -hmm. a couple of times a year that's very cool. It's like a night market. So there are those opportunities to get a lot of international food here in Tampa Bay or wherever you are in Florida. Okay. Is there anything you ate or drank that could have been executed better? I don't know if you had these, Mark, but the uh, cast iron Brussels sprouts? N no. As much as I love Brussels yeah. sprouts, I did not realize. Where was that? I'm what a country? I'm a fan of, of Brussels as well. It was where you um, you had that wine, I believe. The, oh, Bramblewood? Uh, Bramblewood, yes. They could have been done a little bit better. I really love Brussels, and I love especially when they're done fire roasted or with some balsamic or something like that. And these just didn't hit. Okay. I like the, the concept of the Japanese Wagyu beef sushi. It was basically almost like a cheeseburger sushi. It was way too messy. It basically fell apart in my hands. It was not a well-rolled piece of sushi. But, I mean, if that's the complaint, because uh, right. the taste was <laughs> the taste was there. The taste was on point. It was just messy as, as could be. Right. Um, but that's important to note because while there are a lot of seating areas, you're eating a lot while you're standing up. Yeah. 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 So maybe you grab a fork or something. Yeah. And the challenge also sometimes is, of course, you know, it's Florida, it's summer, it's the weather. Um, we, we battled the rain at one point, and it was funny because, like, every time I went to take another sip of one of my wines, another drop of rain Same. fell into Same. it. Same. We would, we would duck into a different uh, souvenir shop every time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is fun in itself. Okay. There are about a dozen countries at the festival, I think 11, and they switch them out. Some are always there and some are different every year. Um, what is a country that you would like to see at the festival? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, you, you mentioned it, Thailand. Yeah. I, I, uh, I love, you know, the Japanese booth in, in, in China, and they do have a ramen booth. They pop up for food and wine. It's very hot to eat ramen, yeah. at, especially in August and September. But Thailand, I think, is missing or or like – taste of the Caribbean, like Jamaica or Cuba or something along those lines. I mean, I, I think they scatter them around in maybe some different outposts, but nothing like specifically themed. 
I think they do a good job of representing America in general with, you know, the flavors of America. I like this year they had the uh, they had both like a French French fry flight. Easy for me to say. And they also had the hot dogs, the, the various styles of hot dogs at Flavors of America. I wonder sometimes if they could just, you know, maybe hone in specifically on a different, you know, Maybe it's flavors of Florida. Maybe it's a California booth or something like that that they could they could expand that way. But I definitely would, you know, the Caribbean. Oh my goodness, yes, that is that is untapped. That yeah, is for untapped. sure. I thought about that too, especially here in Florida because we have so many people from the Caribbean. Right. Yeah, yeah, in Latin America. Um, I'm gonna say they had uh, Brazil, I believe, representing mm-hmm. South America. I want something like maybe Ecuador, and I'm a little biased because I studied abroad there during college, but I would love to see more of that like Andean culture represented. Oh, sure, yeah. um, when I was in Ecuador, yapping gachos were really good, which are these potato pancakes made mm-hmm. from like mashed potatoes and seasoned with onions and stuffed with, again, more cheese. <laughs> All roads lead <laughs> back to cheese. Yeah, but maybe just some, some countries that don't immediately come to mind and maybe some more um, African countries like West Africa. They had Morocco. Yeah. I now want to get into just some of your general tips and strategies for eating and drinking your way around the world. But before I do that, are there any more foods or drinks you wanted to touch on? The very first thing I had was we walked in through France and I got I got escargot. I got a little snail action to start the day and it was tasty. Always good. Yeah. And then they, they do a good job. Of, provided sometimes you just don't think that this is snail, it's going to taste delicious. Yeah, Absolutely. <laughs> This isn't a, a food and wine beverage, um, but I can't go to Epcot without getting it. It's the avocado margarita in Mexico, <laughs> and it's inside the temple. It's that La Cava tequila bar in there. When I was walking around with it, everybody kept asking me, yeah. what is that and where do, you, where do you get it? And it's just – it's a classic, and I just – I would be – uh, remiss to not mention that today. Thank you, because Leslie, I would say the exact same thing. That is one thing that I always get whenever I go to Epcot is I go in there. My friends this time, they did a, um, a couple of tequila flights. They were doing their shooters, and I'm like, I am just going to sip my avocado margarita. It's perfect. Um, and you're inside, and it's yeah. air-conditioned, and it's lovely. And then you hop on the uh, the Trey Amigos um, boat, boat ride, boat ride, yeah. and just and go just, around and relax your margarita. Oh, and that's if nice. for some unforeseen reason you are still hungry, there's a sit down restaurant in there the is. temple, yes. and you can sit on the sort of river and watch the people on the boat ride. is very cool. And guess what? They have they have queso cheese, of course, more cheese. Do. I would I would probably not want to do a sit down during the wine and food fest. We actually did um, we did go to the Italian restaurant, the Italian pizza restaurant, and they make a delicious pizza wood-fired ovens in there, um, and they've got a really nice Italian wine list, but the pizzas are delicious. Um, I took half back to the hotel for for dinner later on that night. I'm not a big fan of sit-downs when I'm doing the Wine and Food Fest, but in that case, we did, and it was it was worth it. It was worth yeah. it. Sounds good. Okay, you two have been multiple times. Give me all the tips. For the person <laughs> listening who's going this weekend or next month, what are some tips for eating and drinking your way around the world? A big tip for me that we just discovered for the first time this past time was ways to stay cool. Because I think when you overheat, you don't want to eat. You don't want to drink. It it becomes not fun. So we bought those portable personal fans that would, you know, you could turn on and and blow on your face whenever, you know, you needed to cool down. The cool towels, the cool rags that you put around. Yeah, those are great. Um, I mean, that was a game changer. And then also... Finding those locations around the park that are air conditioned that you can go in and sit in Morocco. Yeah. Uh, they have that uh, Florida Blue um, like Center in the back lounge that you know you can register for and get in. But there's plenty of places that you can find some AC. And I think if you keep your body temperature regulated, you can consume more food and, and wine and drink. That's a very good point. And as you pointed out as well, Leslie, the fact now that, that the wine and food extends all the way into the future world in the front section of Epcot – Go up and catch a ride, Guardians of the Galaxy ride. You're going to be stuck inside in the air conditioning for at least half an hour. Correct. Yeah. Use use the opportunity, and, and that also gives you the chance to kind of recharge the batteries, get ready for more food and, and, and potential uh, drinks yeah. afterwards. I mean, yes. you've, you've got Nemo. You've got Soren. All of yeah. those are long queues with AC and... Plenty yep. of time to rest. Time mission space out, though. We figured that out. We did not want to do that after the tequila. <laughs> Moana <laughs> is a water feature. 
Yeah. So it's really cool. You can get some great pictures and cool off a little bit. That was going to be one of my tips as well. Don't forget that you're in a theme park that has right. other things going exactly. on. Exactly. Guardians of the Galaxy was phenomenal. I'm, I get chills thinking about it. I'm not yeah. a roller coaster person, but we three of the four colognes loved it. My, <laughs> my husband was feeling a little seasick, <laughs> but we thought it was so much fun. I mean, there are other things to do yeah. in addition to the food. And and. Let me ask you, Dalia, what's it like? Because I'd gone previous years with children, with friends with children. And it's a challenge when you're trying to navigate the countries because, you know, little kids may not be interested in some of these foods. What was it like yep. for you guys? Okay, my kids were a little older. I think they were the perfect age for this, 8 and 12. But I do have some tips one is don't be afraid to split up. So my husband, like you guys, kind of got stuck at the front and wanted to eat and drink everything. But my kids had looked through the book and they're like, I want a hot dog. I want the French fries. I don't want to be stuck in this country for so long. I want to yeah. move on. So there were a few times when we did split up. Maybe he would stay back and I would go with the kids or we would each take one kid or something like that. The other thing, which is ironic, is that you can bring outside food and non-alcoholic beverages into the Disney parks. So I don't know if this tip is for everyone, but I would actually say bring snacks, bring yeah. some goldfish in the backpack, bring the juice boxes, because that will keep your kids from getting hangry and having a meltdown before they arrive at the country that they're really like, you know, they have their hearts set on. Yeah. yeah. And, and the water bottles are definitely something, you know, to go definitely. along with Leslie's idea of keeping cool. Uh, they do have enough cooling stations. The, the water that you're getting out of the water fountain isn't exactly like ice cold, but at that point you just need something to remain f- right. refreshed and that water certainly helps. And it's not $5. It's exactly. <laughs> That's the other thing. Yeah. The 350 yeah. bottles. <laughs> exactly. Another tip for going with family or really anyone, and this applies to any situation, this is me with my mom hat on, is take a picture early because <laughs> it people get hot. They get cranky. People spill on themselves. You talked about eating that messy uh, the sushi. sushi. Yeah, yeah. People spill. Just get that picture out of the way. Find your spot. Whether it's in front of the Eiffel Tower or that big, what do you call that big Epcot dome thing? The ball. The ball. The ball. Whether it's in front of the ball. Planet Earth. Get the picture early while everybody's in a good mood. The weather is Yeah, I was going to say you haven't been rained on. Exactly. <laughs> yes, definitely do Because you're going to be rained on. Yeah. Like, yeah, you will. Bring a poncho. Yeah. Uh, bring a poncho and a, ba- and a backpack, a waterproof backpack. I can't recommend. The other thing we learned the hard way was an extra set of socks. Oh. <laughs> That's, oh. yeah. You know what? My husband wore Crocs with no socks, oh. and his feet did not bother him at all. Good for the him. The other three of us wore tennis shoes with socks. Yeah. But so find whatever your thing is, and also yeah. wear a hat. We wear, all yeah. wore hats. Yeah. Lots, lots of sun protection. Yes. The backpack, though, allows for hand-free eating. Oh, yeah. yeah, oh, or, yeah. It yes, does. You, you can't want to carry things. You it definitely does. don't want to carry and things. And bring a portable charger. Yes. For your phone, yes. definitely. Yes. These are just general Florida life tips. Yeah. This is a Florida life podcast <laughs> now. <laughs> and like I said as well, just, you know, look at the plan in advance. Look at the menus. Figure out there's ways. Because the, the worst part was there was a couple of times where I'm like, I want to go here. But then I realized that I had been over there, <laughs> you know, two hours ago. And now I'm backtracking all the way around. I, in the course of the four days I was over at Disney for the wedding weekend, I ended up walking, I think, 33 miles. Oh, my gosh. It was ridiculous. Wow. It's well, perfect. It, ridiculous. it balances out the food. Yeah, you don't, oh, yeah. Have to, oh, yeah. you don't have to worry about what yeah. you eat. Yeah. They have a few other cool things that people may not think of. One is a concert series called Eat to the Beat, which are like these 30-minute concerts. We saw The Fray. You remember like How to Save a Life mm-hmm. and those songs. So we saw them. That was really cool. Um, some upcoming concerts are Sheila E., Switchfoot, Hanson, Boys to Men, 98 Degrees. And what's cool is the concerts are pretty short. So, you know, we had the kids with us. They weren't familiar with the phrase music, but it was over before they knew it. And they're playing the hits. So maybe they've heard it on the Grey's Anatomy commercial or something. And you can wait in line. The concerts are included with your admission, but you do have to stand in the line. But you don't need to be in the amphitheater to hear the music. Mm -hmm. You can hear it from the park. I saw the band, and I was thrilled when I saw that they were going to be there when I was there, a band called Yellow Card. Yeah. And my early 2000s emo kid was inside of me, was just the happiest guy alive. And I could hear them, I am not kidding you, four countries away from America. (laughs) The loudest show I've ever heard at Epcot. And um, I think they said that they had the best attendance. 
I've never seen that amphitheater area so packed with people, and they sounded so good. It yeah. was it really added to my day to just be able to. Actually, I caught them twice because I caught them like going, and I stopped for a couple of songs, and then coming back, I stopped again. And I was just like, "This is great." This makes the the, the price of admission. Those little totally, things that they throw in. Totally. Yeah, we saw the fray in the evening, and after a few hours of walking around, you know, the world a couple times, we were ready to just sit back and enjoy a concert and kind of cool off. So we really liked that. They also have an Encanto like dance party there that's pretty fun for, you know, people with kids. And then in the evening, you know, the night always ends with a fireworks display, which now has it's more than just fireworks. It's like a light show. It's lasers. It's very cool. So you can book special seating. They have special offerings. So you get the best view, the best pictures. And then it's just like a nice way to end the evening. Yeah. If you can put anything else in your stomach. I know. Well, about two hours before the fireworks, you need to start tapering. <laughs> Slow it yeah, down. Leave, leave some room for dessert. Leave some room for dessert. Or another drink. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or, or the Bailey's milkshake. Yes. For sure. Def, def, please, I beg you, make sure you have I'm the Bailey's so milkshake. I'm so sad that I didn't get that. I might have to try to make one at home in my Vitamix or something. <laughs> Another tip, a few years ago, we had on the podcast a friend of the pod, Wilma Norton, Mm -hmm. who's a big Disney mom. And her tip was to buy a prepaid Disney dining card. So you can buy a prepaid card and then they scan the barcode and that way you don't go over budget. They really pushed that idea back when I first started going, like I said, in about like 2007, 2009. They would have a little card on a a wristband for you. um, And they really pushed that idea. But, you know, we would, you know, we would after like, four or five restaurants or, or countries, we'd be like, okay, time to go fill the card up again. <laughs> Mark so. is not a financial advisor. No, 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 no. <laughs> not, not when it comes to wine and food. No, no. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Any other tips or things you guys wanted to mention? I think you just got to go in with a, honestly, a, a good attitude. The idea that, yeah, it's a theme park. Yeah, it's going to be crowded. Um, Oh, I will say one other thing. For folks particularly who live here in Florida, if you're going to plan to run over there on a weekend, I am not joking. Take a look at the college football schedule. If the University of Florida and or Florida State are not playing, you do not want to go on that Saturday. (laughs) The one year I went, UF was not playing on a Saturday. There were four different reunion groups there. (laughs) Wow. Everywhere you looked, it was blue and orange. Of course, the way both teams are playing this season, they may be coming over for Epcot just to drown their sour sorrows. Uh, But but, as silly as it sounds, check the schedule. Yeah. (laughs) No, that's a great tip. And I like how you started the conversation by saying you most recently went on a Monday, and I thought, yeah. that's already a, a winner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Mondays and Tuesdays, we've heard, are those are the best days, typically less attendance. I may have taken my kids out of school. Yes. <laughs> may have. Mark and Leslie, this was a blast. Thank yes, you so thank much. You. Thank you. This was super fun. Those were my WUSF colleagues, Leslie Laney and Mark Schreiner, chatting with me about the Epcot International Food and Wine Festival, which runs through November 23rd. You can see photos from the festival on our website, thezestpodcast.com. I'm Dalia Colon. I produce The Zest with Andrew Lucas and Alexandria Ebron. This episode was engineered by Chris Sampson. The Zest is a production of WUSF, copyright 2024, part of the NPR Network.